Hey, Pastor Jeff here again, and welcome to The Walk. We're in episode seven, and we are talking today about the clarity of Scripture. Have you ever read a passage in the Bible and got through with it and thought to yourself, what did I just read? I have no idea what that means. I think we could all um, understand and, you know, agree with that sentiment, right? Even um, in the scriptures, even the Apostle Peter said, you know, some of the things that Paul writes are, are hard to understand. <laughs> and so even the Apostles understood there were some things that were difficult to understand. And the truth is, you know, there are some things that are not, um, you know, easy in the Bible to, to really grasp at first. But that doesn't mean that the Bible is, is generally difficult to understand. In fact, the opposite is true. It's generally clear. It's generally easily accessible. And, you know, God has given us his word and he expects us to, to understand it and to and even teach it to our families and to speak about it all day and to, you know, really experience what it has to, to say to us. Today we're talking again about the clarity of scripture and I think it's one of the most important aspects of our faith. Stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Okay, so what do we mean by the clarity of Scripture? What do we mean when we're talking about the Word of God? We say the Word of God has clarity. Well, we mean this, that the Bible is written in such a way that it is sufficiently understandable by even the simplest person, even the least educated person, even the um, just the average person should be able to understand it. Whoever reads it should be able to understand it. Everything that we need to know about salvation, about how to grow in maturity and how to live godly lives, all of those things are clearly laid out in Scripture. There's, no, there's not a lot of difficulty in those things. God has come down to our level. He's sort of condescended and come down and given us His Word. And that's a, that's a real gift. He's, he's come low to speak to us, to speak our language. Um, of course, He wants to communicate to us. And, and we should be grateful for that because... It really reveals his character. It reveals his love for us and um, his willingness to let himself be known to us, to his creation, to those who he created in his own image, right? And he wants us to know and understand his word so that we can live out his purposes for us in this life here and now. So he's not trying to hide things from us. He wants us to know these things. He wants us to understand them, comprehend them, and then apply them to our own lives. And that's clear in the scriptures. In fact, the Bible itself um, affirms its own clarity and expects us to read and understand it. Let's look at what the Bible says. In Psalm 1, 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. We are encouraged to read, to meditate on the word of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6, and you'll, you'll recognize this one. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall... Teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. There, there wasn't just, you know, memorization of scripture here. This is discussion and talking and learning and working through it and teaching your children and talking about it, you know, when you're sitting down in the house, when you're walking down the road, when you're lying down to go to sleep. I mean, this is constant. This is what meditation is. This is like continual engagement with the scriptures, with the word of God, with his commands. We're to understand them well enough that we can teach them to our little children. 
And then they are expected to understand them as well. So even the simplest, even the smallest children can understand the basic principles of the Word of God, can understand what it's trying to say. And that brings me to the next point, is that the Word of God is effective to make wise the simple. In Psalm 119, 130, it says, The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. And then in Proverbs 1, 4, the Proverbs were written in part to do this to it says give prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the youth so the bible is written specifically to give wisdom and prudence and knowledge to the simple to those to to anyone who can understand what i'm saying or what you know you're saying you know uh, to anyone who understands words right uh, they should be able to understand the scriptures, and uh, it, and the scriptures are able to make them wise through what is written. <clears throat> you know, the New Testament is uh, the writers of the New Testament, and even Jesus himself assumed that the scriptures were understood. You know, when Jesus talked to uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the the teachers of the law, the scribes, whatever, um, <clears throat> he assumed they understood them. And when they didn't, he kind of would scold them. He'd say, you just don't understand. And that, that didn't mean the Bible, there was something wrong with the Bible or the scriptures. It meant there was something wrong with the person, the one who's reading it. Um, if someone misunderstood the scriptures, it was their own fault. Jesus kind of made that clear. They either didn't make you know, sufficient effort to understand them, or they willingly denied the truth that's plainly written here. And that is quite often the case. It is always the case with the non-believer that they willingly um, do not want to know and reject the truth of Scripture that's plainly written. Okay. Interestingly, the New Testament was, and the, the letters, right, were written mainly to large congregations. Not to scholars directly or specific like learned pastor, pastors or anything like that. No, it was written to a, a group, a church basically. And then Paul was like, or, or Peter was like, hey, you know, let the other churches read them too. Pass them along because they were clear and understandable. It kind of assumes that average people sitting in the churches would hear them, understand them, and then apply them to their lives. Now, in addition to that, a lot of these churches were filled with Gentile believers, which means they didn't come from a Jewish background. They didn't have a background in the Old Testament scriptures. And so, you know, these references were, were so clear and these letters were so clear uh, that even the Gentiles were expected to understand them and know them, believe them and apply them to their lives. And so the Bible uh, assumes its own clarity and it, and it assumes that it will be understood and then obeyed and applied, right? Now that said, there are some qualifications that we should consider, right? Um, to understand the Bible will take effort on your part, on my part, right? It's not just like we get a... Um, a one-time download from the Holy Spirit who just puts everything into our brain and our heart and we just understand it all, we know it all. That doesn't doesn't happen, right? Uh, studying the Bible is work. It's effort. It takes effort. Uh, the average person uh, and the pastor and the scholar and the most learned people, they, it all takes effort, okay, to understand. That, that doesn't mean that it, it... What I'm saying here is just because it's clear doesn't mean it's it's easy to to get that you know and and to go through that process no it takes effort so we shouldn't be lazy we should be diligent in how we approach the scriptures and how and, and, and in our desire to know and to understand the scriptures we should be diligent we should be like like Deuteronomy was saying like talking about it working it out thinking about it meditating on it uh, speaking about it um, and also obeying it and being willing to obey it because if we're not willing to obey it, we won't, we won't give it the um, 
authority that it has. We won't, we won't ascribe it the authority that it does have. And we will be unwilling to really go deeper because we, we may not want to know what it says if we're not willing to obey it, right? But when you submit to it, when you understand its authority and you submit to its authority, you want to know it so that you can please God and know Him and live a godly and holy life. So that all takes effort. That said, it also takes time, right? Um, uh, again, we have to put an effort, but we have to go through, um, you know, continued and sustained effort. You know, it's, it's that sustained thought, that sustained effort where we grow in wisdom, we grow in understanding. You know, you can't spend three minutes uh, and think you're going to get much out of it, right? It takes time. Extended thought, extended time in meditation, extended time in study um, is necessary to go to grow and to go deeper in the scriptures. And so it takes effort, it takes time. If you really want to grow, you've got to spend the time. I mean, that's just that's with anything, right? If you want to become a, a master carpenter, you've got to you've got to go through the apprenticeship and you've got to understand it, and it's going to take time. You want to master and understand uh, more deeply what the Bible has to say, then you've got to put the time and the effort into it. Even with that, all the time and all the effort in the world, the scriptures are not going to be fully and exhaustively understood by any person in a single lifetime. And that is not a bad thing. And what I mean is, it means that there is a continual process of growth. And we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as it says in 2 Peter. You know, that process of of digging into the Bible and and, and constantly um, feeding on it is a a blessing to us. You'll never go hungry or thirsty (laughs) with this you know, before you, you, you just won't, it's always going to feed you, you have, a, you have a lifetime, an eternity of food, of meat right here, just ready in, at your fingertips, okay, so that's a blessing to know that, you know, you're not going to exhaust, uh, you're not going to fully understand and exhaustively understand this word in, in, in an entire lifetime, it doesn't, doesn't matter how long you live. Studying the Bible also takes help um, and let's let's go through what kind of help first we need help from the Holy Spirit okay non-believers do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them and they don't have the understanding they don't have the mind of Christ they don't have the understanding necessary uh, via the person of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them they don't have that And so they aren't illuminated in their understanding. And illuminated basically is God's opening up your eyes to see and understand what is written. Okay? That's illumination. So we need the help from the Holy Spirit to illuminate us, to give us understanding, give us wisdom, help us to see what's here, and to to absorb that, to receive that, to know it, to, to have it penetrate our minds and our hearts. And... Uh, that is a supernatural thing, okay? So the effort that you put in naturally um, is of no use without the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Spirit, okay? So we, we need the help of God, the Holy Spirit. We also can use the help of teachers, of preachers, and of other resources like commentaries, books, um, sermons, uh, all of these kinds of tools. There's, I have a software that I use every week um, that I very quickly get a lot of information out of. And we can use those tools, and they're very, very helpful and often um, necessary. Um, if you have an English translation of the Bible, that is actually a tool <laughs> of understanding the original uh, transcripts or the original um, writings that were in Hebrew and Greek and some Aramaic. And so you're using a tool, you know, to understand 
the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's translated into our language. So it still has that same authority. Uh, but it's also an interpretation. Um, a very, very good one. A very, very close one. Hopefully you're using the right kind of Bible. And, um, and you're getting, getting that good interpretation. But we got to use tools. Sometimes we got to use tools. If you don't know the original languages, you're going to need that in your own language. Uh, if you were in a, in a language now today that maybe the Bible's not translated in, you would need the tools to learn Greek and Hebrew and then translate those things into your own language so that you could understand the Word of God. So the, there are those tools. Think, I thank God for scholars. I thank God for um, people with the gift of intellect to be able to help us with those things. Um, that is a blessing to the church. It's not a hindrance. I know some people who would say, no, I just need my Bible alone and that's it. And I, that is sufficient. Of course it is. Don't get me wrong. But to neglect these other great tools um, per, given to us by people who were um, gifted and indwelt by God, the Holy Spirit, and who have poured their lives into giving this, these other tools, these other gifts that would help us in our understanding, I think neglecting those things is foolish. So use those things. Now again, they are not um, authoritative. The Bible alone is authoritative, but they are helpful tools, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. That doesn't mean that help is required, okay? So we, as I talked about in the episode on authority, we don't need like a church authority or a special interpreting body that will teach us what the Bible says and then bind us to that interpretation, okay? We don't need that. We don't have that uh, as as Protestant believers, we don't have that authority over us. We we have the scriptures. And so, though we can use tools and teachers and we can rely on other resources to help us understand, they, aren't necess- they are not authoritative. Um, and there is no authority needed to understand the scripture correctly. Okay? So it's going to take help from the Holy Spirit. We can get help from teachers and resources. And uh, those are all blessings. Um, Even though the Bible is clear, there will be misunderstanding and there will be disagreement um, of interpretations, right? Obviously, if it was plain and clear, everyone would agree perfectly. But we have some problems, right? Well, our problems are our brains. Our brains are finite. We are finite. We... Um, have limitations of understanding. We exist in uh, a world that's different from the world that is in the is described in the Bible. So we have some distance there. That doesn't mean again we can use tools, we can use teachers, we can use resources <clears throat> to help us bridge that gap. Um, but we're going to have some some things that we make mistakes in because obviously we have lots of different theological interpretations on some things um and you know that's because hey somebody's wrong somebody's right now that said the major things the major doctrines the important and what we call essential doctrines all christians agree on those things you know the gospel the trinity you know the deity of of Christ, uh, all of, all of those things are we all agree on. The secondary uh, theological issues is where we have a broader disagreement, and that's okay. Um, it just means that we're not gonna, we just don't understand everything um, clearly, or we may not have the right hermeneutic. And hermeneutic just means the way we interpret the Bible. It's, it's the approach that we take to interpret the Bible. Sometimes we have a, a wrong hermeneutic and we look at it through a lens that doesn't quite uh, make sense or doesn't quite fit properly and it will tweak our understanding. So again, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to understand these things. But God uh, you know, makes sure that what we need to know, again, as I said in the beginning, those things are clear. Everything according you know regarding salvation and 
growing in maturity and wisdom and living a godly life. That's all here. It's very clear. You know, we have limitations uh, in our flesh. And, you know, I want to just reiterate, the problem never lies with Scripture. The problem is always uh, lying. It always lies with the reader and interpreter, okay? It's uh, never Scripture's fault when we mess up. And Jesus, again, said that to the uh, teachers that he was dealing with in his day. Okay, Uh, moving along. The clarity of Scripture, obviously... I'm doing an, we're doing an entire episode on it. It's very important. And it's important because it means that we can study the Bible effectively and discern God's will. It, it's, um, that is a huge thing. That's a kind of a unique thing to Christianity. That we can understand God, we can know Him through His Word, and then we can discern His will and then do what he wants us to do. Um, of course, in the power of the Holy Spirit and with the indwelling Holy Spirit, properly interpreting those things. So the clarity of the scriptures, it just gives us so much. You know, It allows us to see what God's will is and to know it and to just do it. It's very simple. And it also... It also allows us to understand God's nature and grow in our relationship with Him. You know, we have the scriptures and they just illuminate so much about God. They, they tell us so much about Him. They reveal who He is in such a significant way. Now, of course, it's not exhaustive again, but it's so significant and it's so great that we can then take that and we can understand God. And we can then, you know, in our prayer life, in our meditation, in our, in our relationship with Him, we can, we can know Him and we can approach Him uh, with that knowledge and uh, gain so much more out of it and, and just grow in that intimacy with Him. And, you know, because of the clarity of Scripture... As I said earlier, we're free to approach the Word of God without a mediator, without any special knowledge. You know, there's no key required to unlock some code of interpretation here. You know, I've seen books out there about, of course, you know, eschatology, end times, and, you know, there's these, I've cracked the code, and here's the code, and here's who's the Antichrist, and here's who's this and that and the you know it's like okay that's not helpful and it's not true like none of those things are necessary the the bible's clear even revelation if you read revelation people are intimidated by revelation it's very clear use some tools uh, uh to to help you understand it but it's it's not as difficult as people think it is you know there's uh, again um The clarity of Scripture reveals that God loves us and that He's given us a great, great gift. You know, to be able to have the Word of God and to really clearly understand it and interpret it is such a blessing. And I hope you're getting that. I hope you understand that. I hope that's that's clear to you. I hope you feel the same way and understand that. Um... I don't know if you've seen, you know, these videos of people in other countries who who get a Bible and they are overwhelmed with joy and they're just flooded with tears and they're weeping because of this gift that we have, that they have the Word of God. And they wouldn't weep that way, they wouldn't feel that way if they thought it could not be understood. No, they know it can be understood. And they understand that the clarity of Scripture opens that to them and gives and is the real key to this gift that God has given us in His Word. So let me conclude with a few different questions here. Question number one. Why is it important that the Bible was written clearly and understandably for us? I hope I've given you a few reasons, but maybe you have some some other reasons that you can think of that 
that that show you know that, uh, that explain why it's so important that the Bible is clear and understandable for us, even the simplest of us, right? Question number two: How does knowing that we are expected to understand the Bible change your approach to reading it? So, knowing that you're expected to understand it, how does that change your approach to reading it? How does it change your effort? How does it change the time you spend? <laughs> Um, how does it change the way you look at it, the way you read it, if you know that you're supposed to understand it? All right, question number three. What are some practical ways you can grow in your understanding of the Bible this year? Again, maybe that means more time in the scriptures. Maybe it means putting more effort. Maybe it means investing in some tools or taking a course or uh, continuing with the walk. Um, Maybe growing with a small group or a one-on-one discipleship, something along those lines. But there's many practical ways that you can grow in your understanding of the Bible. So think about those things. Discuss that with each other. Guys, thank you so much for uh, following along with this study. It's a real blessing to be able to teach and to be able to connect with you. I pray that these are just a huge blessing to you. We'll see you on the next lesson. God bless you. Love you guys. Take care.